Hi guys, welcome to another art video. This time I'm showing you a process of my latest piece, which I called Roses, so let's begin. As always, I start out um, with my light table, transferring the sketch onto a normal piece of paper using a Pigma Micron 005 pen. It's a sepia colored pen with a really, really fine tip. I love these pens, they are so awesome. Um, the tip is super, super small, which is really awesome for getting those little details that I love to put in. Also, the color is perfect because once you start coloring, the lines kind of disappear and it's not as harsh as like a black pen because um, I was never a fan of the harsh black lines look. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just personally not my style. So I love these pens because they just give the whole piece kind of a nice soft feel to it. So, of course, what I'm doing here, like I said, is I'm using a light table. Um, it was actually made for me. Um, it's not like a brand name or anything. It's literally just um, a box with a light bulb in it. So they're not, they don't have to be super expensive. Like you don't have to buy a lightograph light table to have one. You can totally just use a box and a light bulb because as you can see, it, work, it works perfectly. Um, so yeah, I'm just going over my sketch with the pen and I'm trying to go really lightly at first because later I will go over the lines again to add line weights but for now I'm just going really really lightly um, and yeah Alright, so here I am adding line weights. I'm using a bit bigger of a pen this time. It's a uh, 01 pen instead of 005. And you can kind of see that the tip is a bit bigger, but it's still pretty thin because I still like to have that delicate feel. So again, I'm just going over my lines and adding a bit darker lines and thicker lines in some places. My art teacher actually told me that a line work is like a piece of music. It would be really boring if the music was just one speed, one tempo, um, and uh, art is the same way. You don't want to have just one kind of line. You want to add it up and make the whole thing just more interesting. So that was a piece of advice that I really took to heart, and I just love going crazy with the line weights. All right, now I'm getting into the coloring. Um, I love to use Copic markers. Here I'm using Copic Chow markers, which you can see right here. They have a really nice um, chisel tip, which I will show in just a second. Um, the chisel tip I don't really use much, if I'm being totally honest. Um, I much prefer to use the marker tip, which is the other side, and it has like a nice brush-like feel to it and it just makes blending so much easier. So here I am adding the skin tone. Actually, this is my second time coloring this piece because the first time um, I totally botched the skin. Like it looked really gross and I was going for a really cool colored skin tone that was really pale and really light. And the first time I tried it, it looked muddy and too dark and I was just bleh. It was just not what I wanted, so I ended up kind of just restarting completely, so I did the lines all over again, and this time it turned out a heck of a lot better. It's still not quite what I envisioned in the first place, but I like it a lot better than what I did the first time. So word to the wise, always try out your colors on a piece of paper before you actually put them on the final product. It will save your life. Trust me. Right now I'm doing the hair. I wanted a really nice pastel colored for the hair because um, I just think it looks really pretty and I've always wanted pastel hair. Um, so just a word of caution, I did stop recording halfway through because my camera sucks um, and I didn't realize it. But basically I'm just kind of starting with a light color and just flicking outward and making it lighter as I go out and yeah. I'm happy with that, how that came out. Um, now I'm just adding details, basically. Um, yeah, don't know really what else to say here. Um, just kind of adding, let's see, like the, the earrings and the eyebrows and the lips and kind of bringing the whole thing together. 
Um, here are the roses. I sped this part up a lot because it was kind of boring if I didn't, because it was a really slow process. I added one base color, which was the orangey red color. Then I did a darker brown red on top of that to kind of flesh it out. And then I put a bright red on top of it to kind of bring out the reds more. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Here I'm pulling pink into the skin tone. Um, I wanted to really blend those colors together to look like the red was seeping into the skin. So what I did is I just saturated that paper really, really well, and I just pulled the color out. And now I'm adding the little blood streaks. Um, random fact about me, I love coloring blood for some reason. I do not know why. Um, I just think it's, I don't know, I just like doing it. It's fun. I don't know. Um, so I kind of got inspiration for this from how I've been feeling health-wise lately. Um, cystic fibrosis, another name for it is 60, or 65 roses, which is where I got the roses flower crown kind of idea from. So that's where the idea came from at least. Um, cause I've just been feeling kind of bleh lately. So I usually like to draw stuff like this to kind of help me snap out of it and I feel a lot better afterwards. And now I'm adding highlights, which is one of my favorite things. Um, I love to make just things pop and it just makes it look really nice and fun. And then I realized as soon as I finished I didn't have a background planned and I hate not having backgrounds for things. So I just kind of added a quick little diamond pattern, which I think turned out really nice. Um, and I love how the pink and the purples kind of work together. And yeah, that's basically it. Here's the finished product. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.